Welcome to another edition of Tales of the Workshop. Today, we're going to start examining what happens when a three-phase induction motor loses a phase. And we'll start a conversation about will the machine still run or what are some of the negative effects that you have to be aware of. Stay tuned. Here at my workstation, I've got the power supply already pre-wired to three amp meters. We have a three-phase squirrel cage induction motor. Now, one of the things we wanted to talk about today is what happens when one of the windings loses a phase. Is this bad? Could there be some consequences? Let's find out. What I'm going to do is take each lead and because they're color coded, we're gonna take the red coming from the amp meter to the red phase, black, going to the black phase, and finally blue to the blue phase. Now, because this motor is out of a, uh, a teaching workstation, we actually had to wire the other side of the winding. So this is set up as a Y connection. So what we're gonna have a look at is we're gonna set up a baseline. So we're gonna energize our power supply, feeding it with three phase 208 volts. Now what we can see is the motor's operating as it normally would be. We saw that there was an inrush of current and it's actually drawing about 0.7 of an amp, well within its capabilities. Now here's an interesting thing. If I disconnect the red phase, my three phase motor continues to operate. What it is is that this operates on the principle of a rotating magnetic field. If the rotor is in operation or is rotating at the time that we lose a phase, the motor will continue to operate, albeit what's happening though is that the other two phases that were in operation are now having to kind of split the load and you're seeing an increase in current as well because I've lost a phase, I've also lost a little bit of the horsepower rating. If this was rated at a quarter of a horsepower, now we're a little bit less than a quarter horsepower. The motor will not be able to develop the same amount of torque because we've lost a phase. But I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna talk about what happens when the motor comes to a stop. Now, an interesting note is that electric motors depend on counter EMF. Now, what is counter EMF? Well, the fact is, is that when the motor is operating, whoops, when the motor is operating, the shaft is turning. When the shaft is turning, it's cutting against the magnetic field that is uh, creating the rotation. That creates an induced voltage inside of the rotor bars. Now, if we did not have any kind of rotation, I would have no counter EMF. As a result, the internal impedance of the motor starts to go up. Impedance, or it's based off of resistance, and current are inversely proportional to one another. So if I'm actually losing impedance, what is going to happen, according to Ohm's law, is that the current's going to increase. If I've got too much current flowing through, that's going to be bad because of the windings in the motor are going to get hot. And heat is the enemy when we're talking electrical equipment. If this motor was rated at no more than 1.2 amps of current, and we're subjecting the motor to more current than it was rated for, that's gonna shorten the life of the machine. And that's something we want to avoid. Now let's get back to our demonstration. Here we go, we're going to start up again, but minus one phase. Now pay close attention to what the rotor is going to do, but as well, let's 
pay close attention to what the amp meters are going to register. Here goes. Now look, we can actually see that we've got excessive current of over 2.5 amps. I've had to turn the power off. Also, let's pay close attention to the rotor. I'm going to do this again. Now, we can see that the stator is humming. The rotor will not turn. Why is that? Well, it comes down to how the, the, the voltage waveforms interact. We've lost one phase. Now, for the three phases, what happens is that there's a gap in the sine waves. And the rotor basically sees this as a pulse. Because of the fact we do not have a complete three waveforms that helps establish a direction of rotation, meaning based off of the direction of rotation, I've got red, black, and blue. This will help set up which way the rotating magnetic field turns, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, to help prove the point, what we're going to do, first things first, I've got to change the leads to something a little bit longer so I can open up the cabinet. Now, I'm a licensed electrician and an electrical professor. I'm considered to be an expert, so I'm, I'm not advocating that you try this at home, but please have a look at what we're doing. I'm not exposing myself to any real danger here. What I am going to do is I'm going to open the door of this cabinet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish the direction of rotation for the motor. I just mentioned the, the rotor can't turn because of the fact it's missing a phase. Due to the phase angle difference between the two waveforms it's not enough to induce a direction of rotation. As a result, the rotor just sits there. But if I turn the power on and I start to twist the, uh, the shaft of the motor, I am going to induce or establish that direction of rotation for the motor. And once I do that, the rotor will be able to start turning and pick up some speed. Just watch. We turn on the power, we hear the humming. Come on. I had to give it a little bit more of a twist, but what you can see is once I gave it that initial turning force, I established the direction of rotation, the motor started to turn. Let's turn the power off again. We're going to wait for the shaft to come to a stop. Now, I turned it clockwise. Can I do the same thing but turning it counterclockwise? Let's see. We're going to turn the power on. Only two phases. And I now have it going counterclockwise. So let's recap what we've learned today. What we've learned is that a three-phase induction motor operates on the principle of magnetic induction coming from three phases establishing a rotating magnetic field that induces voltage and current into the rotor. The rotor must turn in order to regulate the amount of current flow in the motor. When the rotor starts to slow down, or we lose a phase, what happens? The two remaining phases end up having to take up some of the slack, but they start drawing more current, which is not necessarily a good thing for the overall life expectancy of this piece of equipment. We want to keep the current at its FLA listing. When we try and operate the motor with one phase missing, what are we doing? We're basically exposing the motor to what we call locked rotor current meaning the rotor is not turning, it's not creating that counter EMF that helps regulate current flow, and in the end, you end up uh, destroying the motor in the process. I was able to demonstrate that I can establish a direction of rotation and to get the motor turning, and 
by my, uh, by my doing, I establish whether or not the motor was going to turn clockwise or counterclockwise. And that when we lose a phase, the only thing that happens and why the rotor does not turn is it only sees the magnetic field as a pulse. And that's Until next time, please stay safe and please consider hitting like and subscribe to this channel.